We begin with President Obama fresh off negotiating a new global agreement on nuclear terrorism with 49 leaders from around the world, pivoting now to a much tougher crowd and probably a much steeper diplomatic challenge. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, I, I want to welcome uh, congressional leaders uh, to uh, one of our periodic meetings. It's a meeting with world leaders to prevent nuclear terrorism. Child's play. Meeting with congressional leaders here to pass laws in America with giant ma Democratic majorities. And the president's a Democrat? Yeah, good luck with that. Today, President Obama welcomed Republicans to the White House today uh, for a big bipartisan talk on Wall Street reform. Wall Street reform, of course, has already passed the House. It's already passed the first committee in the Senate. It is on its way toward passing. The only questions now are when it's going to pass and with how much Republican support. Coming out of today's meeting at the White House, uh, Mitch McConnell and John Boehner, the top Republicans in Congress, they affirmed that on this issue, they really meant that whole not just the party of no thing. Um, I think at this point they are debuting the party of hell no thing. Uh, the American people are uh, continuing to ask the question, where are the jobs? And when you look at this uh, financial services bill, uh, my concern uh, is that it's going to protect uh, the biggest banks in America and harm the smallest banks. It's a bill that uh, actually guarantees future bailouts of Wall Street banks. In, in fact, if you look at it carefully, it will lead to endless taxpayer bailouts of Wall Street banks. That is clearly not the direction the American people would like for us to go and also not the direction uh, Senate Republicans would like to go. So according to Mitch McConnell there, uh, this reform bill will lead to endless taxpayer bailouts of Wall Street. That's what he said, endless taxpayer bailouts of Wall Street. Uh, what it really does is not that. If the Dodd bill becomes law, big banks have to pay into a bailout insurance fund, essentially. So banks have to pay for bailouts in the future, not taxpayers. The bill that passed the House includes an even bigger pool that banks have to pay into. But the whole idea is that if banks need bailing out, banks themselves do the bailing out now, not us. That's the whole idea. In the Senate bill, the FDIC actually dismantles banks that fail. They sell off their various pieces instead of just propping up the giant ex existing banks with, with taxpayer money like we did last time. Now, you, you may not like this bill. There may be all sorts of reasons to object to it, but endless taxpayer bailouts? Endless taxpayer bailouts. Yeah, th yeah, that's not true. That's not there. Uh, it's not surprising that Republicans are opposed to Wall Street reform. No Republicans voted for it at all when it passed the House. Uh, the Republican Party has pursued this unified strategy of saying no to everything in Congress while they're in the minority. It is not surprising they're against Wall Street reform. It is interesting, though, that they're explaining why they're against Wall Street reform by railing against something that's not at all recognizable in the bill in any way. Where do they get this stuff? Actually, we know where they're getting this stuff. You might remember back in February, we reported on a memo obtained by Sam Stein at the Huffington Post. It was a 17-page memo of suggested talking points for Republicans written by Republican pollster Frank Luntz. The memo advised Republicans how to not only kill Wall Street reform, but to gain the biggest possible political advantage from killing it. Uh, for example, in a, in a section that's titled Words to Use, Mr. Luntz recommends that Republicans include never again, never again in their anti-Wall Street reform speechifying. Never again, never again should taxpayers be expected to bail out Wall Street from its own mistakes. Well done. Check. Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Back to the talking points here. Uh, quote, frankly, the single best way to kill any legislation is to link it to the big bank bailout. Over to you. We cannot allow endless taxpayer-funded bailouts for big Wall Street banks. We'll guarantee a perpetual taxpayer bailout of Wall Street banks. It will lead to endless taxpayer bailouts of Wall Street banks. That provides an endless opportunity for taxpayer bailouts of Wall Street banks. And this bill, make no mistake about it, is a permanent taxpayer bailout of Wall Street banks. Go, man, go. You are so on point. 
I don't know if you'd call us at this point like a choir or a, a chorus. I was never all that clear on the differences between them. But all together, you guys sound great. Another talking point from the memo is this, quote, uh, taxpayers should not be held responsible for the failure of big business any longer. If a business is going to fail, not, no matter how big, let it fail. We won't solve this problem until the biggest banks are allowed to fail. Never mind, that's precisely what the Democrats are proposing too. Mitch McConnell, make some hay here. I know you can do it. It, it does take a little bit of the suspense out of this. But if you want to read for yourself the script that Republicans are reading from when they say Wall Street shouldn't be reformed, uh, the script was leaked two months ago. Uh, and we have posted it on the Maddow blog today. You can follow along in the day's news as long as this is going to be debated. If you look at the client list of the author of that memo, I'm sure that the big Wall Street firms among those clients are delighted to see that the script is being followed uh, with such attention to detail. The talking points are well crafted. They sound great. They are totally disconnected from the facts. But hey, in health reform, you know, you don't think the people who invented the whole death panels idea thought that was real, do you? Reality is not exactly how this stuff works. Joining us now is Howard Feynman, MSNBC political analyst and Newsweek senior Washington correspondent. Hi, Howard. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Rachel. Is Wall Street reform going to be something that takes a year or longer like health care? Or, or is there a path to actually finishing this anytime soon? I don't think it's going to take that long. It's another big, complex piece of legislation, but I think the politics of this are sharper and clearer. And as try as he might, Mitch McConnell, uh, to make himself out to be the populist concern for the little guy here, the reasons that the Republicans really oppose this bill uh, are ones that are going to be hard for them to defend. Because what they really don't like is they don't want the tax on the banks, the fees on the banks. And as you said, it's not a bailout bill. It's more like an orderly burial bill, you know, than it is a bailout bill. They don't like the new regulations on derivatives and other fancy ways of raising credit. They don't like the idea of setting up a consumer credit agency to monitor lending by banks and other institutions. And they don't like the controls on small banks. That's what they don't like. That's what they really don't like. And unlike health care, where they were able to frame the issue and also raise, I think, populist fears and resentment about government. This is a situation, Rachel, where the government is actually trying to rein in reform and control uh, actors on the global scene that American voters like even less than they like government, namely uh, big banks and Wall Street. Um, I was thinking about the sort of the Republican challenges on this. Uh, when I saw Charlie Gasparino's reporting this week that uh, Mitch McConnell came to New York last week to meet with billionaire hedge fund managers to both ask them for Republican campaign donations and to pledge that Republicans would kill reform. Now, Charlie Gasparino works now for Fox Business. And it just got me thinking, you know, is this something on which Republicans might really potentially have trouble with uh, for the more populist side of their base, those folks out in the streets at the Tea Party? Yeah, I think, yes, I think so. I think think so and 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 you can you can watch Mitch McConnell trying to get a hold of this and really not being able to do it because at the same time he's pledging his support for the small bankers and his antagonism to the big bankers and so on as you say he's up there promising the hedge fund guys don't worry we're not going to let the people at the commodity futures trading commission go crazy regulating derivatives, which is precisely what they think the CFTC wants to do right now. And ironically, the guy running the CFTC, a guy named Gary Gensler, is trying to make up for his own past mistakes and being too lenient on the growth of deri derivatives and other fancy instruments by really proposing in this bill some really tough measures. McConnell and the Republicans don't want them. That's really one of the main things they don't want in this. They're going to use that bailout word because Luntz gave it to them, but that's not really what they're about here, and that will eventually show through. You know, it'll then eventually be revealed. I'll, I'll do my best to keep revealing it. <laughs> <laughs> Are Republicans yes. sort of lining up rock solid behind McConnell on this? Does he have a unified caucus in the Senate? Are there, are there any Republicans, Democrats, think they might be able to get to vote with them on this? Well, I was talking to a Republican source just a little while ago, said they had a closed-door meeting today. McConnell's trying to line them all up. I'm not sure he's going to be able to get them all there. Because I say the politics are a little different from health care. And the party of no or hell no, I'm not sure is totally going to work here because people want something done to rein in the banks. They do. Uh, so they're not going to get Scott Brown, so I'm told, at least initially, uh, the Democrats, that is. He's going to stick with McConnell on this, at least so far. 
But I think the Democrats, who only need one vote, after all, to break a filibuster, if that's what they're going to try to do, have a good shot at getting one or both of the, of the senators from Maine, Collins or Snow. Uh, and I'm told uh, that the Democrats are aiming also uh, at George Voinovich, who's leaving uh, from Ohio, Republican from Ohio, but a real populist in some ways. And also, oddly enough, and don't laugh, but Judd Gregg, who's also leaving from New Hampshire. And don't forget that Judd Gregg had a brief flirtation with joining the Obama administration. I don't think he's going to do that now. But he wants some kind of orderly structure here. What McConnell is arguing Rachel, is akin to what you might argue, you know, in the old days against having the Corps of Engineers build dams upstream from, say, Louisville, Kentucky, where Mitch McConnell lives. Mitch is saying, no, no, you don't want to build the dams because you're only going to have a flood every 30 years.